Warning. The show you are about to see contains material unsuitable for children and questionable among most adults. Viewer discretion is advised. Tonight, the special without Brent Davis presents The Book Guys with Craig and Greg. <laughs> Appearing tonight, Meredith Gray. <laughs> Jacqueline Novak. <laughs> Jim Toos! <laughs> Musical guest, Halbert! <laughs> Welcome to the Book Guys with Greg and Greg. <laughs> and of course, what would an episode of the Book Guys be without a joke of the week? You guys ready for a joke of the week, huh? Yeah. My career is not going well. I did a corporate gig for the New York Public Library. They had another guy go at the same time. There's nothing worse than getting double booked. Am I right? There you guys go. That's not what I'm talking about. I love this crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, the hosts of the book guys, Greg and Greg. Thank you, Mr. Jokes. Thank you, Mr. Jokes. Thank you. Wow. I'm Greg DeBella, literary critic for the Cleveland Sun News. And I'm Greg Gagne, book reviewer for The Plain Dealer. And, and we, we are The Book Guys. <laughs> Your enthusiasm is not matched by us. <laughs> Ours is much higher than yours. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, shucks. <laughs> so, uh, right, three uh, guests? Right. Yeah, uh, okay. Well, um, I hope you like the joke, <laughs> and uh, I love the show, and I love this crowd. Good, good night. <laughs> Recent budget changes in our respective newspapers have us taking over other parts of the art sections, and, well, we love it. <laughs> and what better way to celebrate our love of lit than with a new TV show? Tonight, we welcome comedian and author of the new book, How to Weep in Public, Feeble Offerings on Depression from One Who Knows, Jacqueline Novak. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Oh. And we welcome singer, activist, and publisher, Meredith Graves. And Jim Toos. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> also, uh, for you literary fans here tonight, we have got such a huge surprise for you in store. Uh, I, should we even spoil No, I think, I think yeah. we should. Well, what Tell do you it. think? Yeah, let's well, spoil it. Well, I. <laughs> First of all, I think we need to address our very enthusiastic fan here tonight. What? Hi, guys! <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Gregors? What's up, Gregs? Hi, I'm Greg. Hi. And I'm Greg. Hi, Gregs. How are you doing? I'm Roy. Can you guys hear me? Hey, can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Hey, what's up? Oh, I'm a mega super awesome fan. I can't believe I'm here. This is so wild stuff. <laughs> I love your shirt. Thanks, man. I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it. Well, I must ask, I always love asking fans this, how did you find out about the show? Oh, I looked up online and I saw that, oh, you guys were gonna do a show, you guys, you guys did this film show one time and all these other things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, uh, I was just like, I don't know, I gotta check these guys out now, I just, I've been reading books like crazy. Oh, we got you into reading. Yeah, you got me, yeah. You guys, you guys, guess what? Guess what? I read my first book, or I'm reading it. Oh, wait, and what is the first book you're reading? The Sun Tzu Art of War. Yeah. An instant classic. Yeah, 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 it's awesome. It's the best book. It leads you into, like, all these awesome things about adapting to, like, awesome, like, situations and how to live in the world and all this stuff by samurai swordsmiths. Samurai sword guys, you know? The guys from the samurais? Yeah. All right. Oh, Gregors! Gregors! <laughs> it's me, Roy! Oh my god. It's well, Roy! I'm filled with so much joy that I'm here to see you! Oh. Oh. Uh, well, 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 we will be having a legendary author joining the show here tonight. And, no way. Uh, wait. And, uh, but uh, unfortunately, it won't be Sun Tzu. <laughs> no! Okay. <sighs> So, uh, Mr. Jokes, he gave his joke of the week. 
I think it's about time that we celebrate our book of the week. Greg, what is your yeah. <laughs> yeah. Greg, what is your book of the week? This week, I'm choosing journalist Stephanie Wyan's debut thriller, The Bride. How about you, Greg? My book of the week is the debut novel of journalist Stephanie Wyan, The Bride. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, we share we share a, a room. Uh, <laughs> yet, at no point during the week did I see you reading *The Bride*. Well, Greg, there's a lot about me you don't know. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Veteran reporter Stephanie Wyan brings a journalist's eye to *The Bride*, the story of a woman thrust into the spotlight after a husband, accused of a terrible crime, dies in an accident. I give it a skim it. How about you, Greg? It's skim it for me too, Greg. <laughs> well, uh, our super fan must be very excited now. I We've gotten so through our uh, long-winded Book of the Week segment. Yeah. And now we are about to surprise you. Who is it, you guys? <laughs> I've been sitting on my buns trying to figure it out this whole time. Reading is awesome. <laughs> Tell me. Are you familiar with a writer by the name of Euphony Doggett? Doggett? Huh? What? Are you kidding me? She's like my super awesome best time ever. Number one, oh my God, she's my favorite author. Holy Christmas, holy Christmas. You guys are in for a mega super treat. <laughs> oh, I read her book. Start to finish, start to finish, start to finish, start to finish. All the time! <laughs> Bedtime novel, wake up novel, it's the best. Well, what about Sun Tzu? Sun Tzu, forget him now! <laughs> forget him! He's ancient! He's ancient! Well, that's true. Uh, Euphony Doggett uh, grew up in Providence, Rhode Island. Oh. Running away from home at 14, she educated herself not in a classroom, but instead the dusty shelves of the Providence Public Library. Oh my God. Her remarkable book, Laundry on the Line was discovered yeah. when William Shawn, then editor of the New Yorker, literally stumbled upon a discarded manuscript outside of a Howard Johnson on 46th and Broadway after her drug dealing former lover had abandoned her. Oh and the God. book. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause for the legendary Euphony Doggett. Yeah! Woo! Where is. Oh! oh. You on the show. It's a what true a honor. Look at true honor. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, let, let me grab a chair for you. Oh, oh goodness. Hi, oh, please. Hi. Take a seat. That's almost like a throne. Thank you so <laughs> much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. When you're sitting in yes. it, it is a throne. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I could not be happier, and I must say, young man. What? I heard what you said about beginning to end and end to beginning, and really, yeah. when laundry is on the line, the line has a beginning and an end, but and yet it doesn't. No. <laughs> You're so, oh my gosh, you get me and I get you. Oh. Dreams come true, I knew it. I knew <laughs> dreams come true. Dreams do come true, mine certainly have. Oh, that's, you know, I remember being in sixth grade, being assigned uh, laundry on the line. Uh, I don't know if, if you have a true sense of the, changes it can make in a young person's life. I do because my life changed and that's what I had to write down. I, I remember one specific incident. I was a little older, maybe around 21 years old. I was walking in the redwood forest and then I came to a place where the forest ended and, and there were brambles and bushes and there were these tiny delicate berries I later found out were called thimble berries. You can't buy them in a store. They're so delicate. They're shaped like a thimble and you have to peel them off the little stump that they grow on. And when you put them in your mouth, they're sweet in a way nothing else is sweet. And you live life in that moment and, and realize your dreams are coming true. I wanted to give that feeling. I wanted to give that feeling sometime. I, <laughs> I wanted um I'm, I'm Ms. Doggett, uh, I, we've all been wondering, you wrote one marvelous piece of literature. Uh, will you ever follow it up? 
I am not in the dentist's office now, is that correct? Um, that's correct. Is that a metaphor? <laughs> is it? I know exactly what you mean. Yes, yes. <laughs> Well, you do have a, a, a way with words, and I, I could only imagine what it would be like to, to, what the painting of your mind would look like, and what it would be like to just run around in there. Art is so mysterious, and yet it's here for us all at all times. So you grew up in Providence, Rhode Island. Where do you live now? I'm a citizen of the world. I live in, I live someplace. I visit here frequently. I visit New York City frequently. I have a Her mind is not what it used to be, I'm afraid. <laughs> that painting uh, might be a little bit confused, uh, dabbed with daubs of uh, varied colors, clashing, not quite making sense. Hello, Greg. Greg. Frankly. Frankly, we've met you before. Indeed. I used to be the valet of Gustav Orzog, the celebrated filmmaker. Yes, that, that's correct. And, uh, the last we saw you, you were uh, uh, f flying off to Europe after his unfortunate passing away. Yes, after uh, Gustav's passing, I did inherit quite a vast fortune. And I spent some time on the beaches of Europe, enjoying myself, some decadent meals, decadent lovemaking with <laughs> many of the young nannies of acquaintances of mine. <laughs> Yes, sitting on the Mediterranean beaches, soaking in the Mediterranean sun into my not-so-Mediterranean skin. <laughs> I know what that's about. Me too. <laughs> there I enjoyed many a brave, bold, blonde conquest. Uh, but uh, no matter how huge fortune may seem, it is always finite, and human appetite, for better or worse, is infinite. <laughs> I quickly ran through that fortune found myself a penniless pauper in Europe. I mean, you are the executor of his will, um, and uh, it's, it's, it's nice to see that you've wound back uh, stateside, and you're, you're uh, now the butler, I presume, of, of Miss Doggett. Not her butler, her boyfriend. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, while I was sitting in a train station in France, I happened to read a story in the International Herald Tribune that broke my heart. I found out that Euphony Doggett, celebrated mind, great author, laundry on the line. The classic. She was losing her mind. What? How can a great mind, a great Letterpress becomes scrambled so that the words are illegible. Well, her works are timeless. The, the true spirit resides in those books. And I thought, I must go to her. I must comfort her. I must love her, as I already did. Who, reading her novel, that original novel, I'm a fan of it, as all the world is, who uh, can forget her description of the bumblebees elbowing their way from flower to flower oh. like janitors moving down a hallway. Yes. <laughs> who can forget the tender description of her young female protagonist entering womanhood, and who, hearing such a description, has not wanted to marry that young woman, or worse. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, we have a question. Yeah. Hey, where did you, like, where did you think about, like, how did you figure out the, the bumblebees? Why? Why do you love bumblebees so much? Like, why are they in your story so much? Do you love bumblebees? I love bumblebees. Bumblebees give honey, but they also symbolize death. They are the entire universe in a darling package of industry and honey. <laughs> you see, every phrase from her mouth is sad, tangled nonsense. <laughs> but going through her papers, I found a wonderful thing. She had an unpublished manuscript. <gasps> oh, yes. That's wonderful Ooh. news. Oh, it is. Though uh, 
This manuscript has not yet been made into films and stage plays, musicals, as Laundry on the Line is. I anticipate that upon its publication, it will be every bit as celebrated and profitable. I, I think our, our pervert sound, sound guy is, is saying that we do have a selection from the novel. Uh, uh. Yes, the novel, uh, strikingly different in tone and subject matter than the original, concerns the uh, goings on, the comings and goings of a young former servant uh, living for the first time in Europe and enjoying uh, a life of uh, decadence. I can see what drew you to this work. Uh, uh, if, if you wouldn't mind, uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, that I would read your words. I'd be very interested to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're beautiful. Her resistant groans had now changed into a different key and gave way, insistent though, inquit pleading. Her Dita's lips glistened with lusty slobber. <laughs> as she bent in satanic worship before the man's thickening lap demon. <laughs> the, the ridges of her spine were visible beneath her smooth, warm coffee skin. She whimpered a few words in her own desert tongue as the man yelled the curses at her that only inflamed her prayer to him. Notice how the protagonist is referred to only as the man, striking notes of modernism. That is true. Uh, uh, obviously more mature subject matter than we're used to from you, but I suppose that's a... A bold choice. A bold choice, yes. I cannot wait to read the whole thing. Uh, do we have a release date? Will we know? Uh, yes, I uh, think as soon as uh, she passes, uh, <laughs> her estate has granted that the novel can be published. Uh, the proceeds going to uh, whoever loves her most. <laughs> oh, uh, or something to that effect. The lawyers had to read it back to me in more literary terms. I, I was just about to say how uh, I cannot wait for this uh, book to come out, but I think I could wait for that reason. <laughs> 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 I love my lemon drop. <laughs> uh, well, if you wouldn't mind, uh, uh, we have some authors on here tonight, and uh, perhaps uh, you could see what uh, the, the more modern author uh, goes through, and uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, sticking around and just taking care of her. I, nothing I love more than to take care of her. Okay. <laughs> nothing could please me more. Fine. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in her new book, How to Weep in Public, Feeble Offerings on Depression from One Who Knows, comedian Jacqueline Novak explores her personal experience with depression and author's tongue-in-cheek advice in this humorous new memoir. Her writing is full of unexpected metaphors, unapologetically offensive humor, but it adds levity to this daunting topic of depression. Let's hope she adds a little bit of levity to tonight's show. Please welcome Jacqueline Novak. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, so cool. It feels a, a bit, uh, no offense to your writing, but to be in the presence of Miss Doggett, uh, I, I hope you don't take offense, but uh, we're celebrating all different uh, 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 writers tonight. Um, beginning with babyhood and progressing through a semi-mature adulthood, you whack depression left and right in this book, uh, all the while digging deeply into your own depressed life and laying bare various bits of personal trivia, problems, and issues that definitely pinpoint a, uh, someone as a depresso. <laughs> Uh, now, can you tell our viewers what a depresso is, and can we get it with cream? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does sound a little bit like like espresso, I guess. Yes, that's exactly what we were thinking. That's when what we thought. Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten that a few times, um, but I actually just sort of meant it as a um, term for someone dealing with depression, or you know, I didn't want to say depressive because I thought that kind of had this. Woody Allen connotation is sort of a morose character, you know. We um, love Woody Allen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, he tackled, you know, a lot of experiences. He's an excellent writer. Y he Very is. Very expressive dialogue. <laughs> but we're not talking about Absolutely. Woody Allen. Absolutely. We're talking about Jacqueline Novak. <laughs> yes. So I didn't want to say depressive. I thought that sounded like a personality type, but I also didn't want to have to keep saying person suffering from depression. 
Um, and sometimes people aren't even sure. So I just kind of wanted a catch-all term that would be familiar and friendly and kind of a way of saying us, we who are dealing with the question of depression at all. And I thought depresso sounded kind of cozy. So depression, that's not funny. <laughs> How do you make it funny? Um, I think, you know, most humor ultimately is just about things in life, right? So, um, you know, what's inherently funny? Nothing really, right? Um, the things that are inherently funny are rarely good comedy, right? Uh, you know, a, if there was a squirrel that was like doing something weird, you know, would it be a great comedy bit to talk about the squirrel that did something weird? Probably not. What, <laughs> what, was, it, what was the squirrel doing? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like, you know, anything you could even imagine. Maybe, maybe he lost his nut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like that would be exactly funny on its own already. So for someone to then you know take that as a topic to try to, <laughs> try to, to, try to make it funny, you know, it wouldn't be as rich. So I found that writing about something like depression, um, you know, the less seemingly funny something is, the more ground there is to go digging for your own nut. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. In your book, you relate such childhood stories as refusing to produce a urine sample for the doctor or how upset you were when you could no longer hunt for Easter eggs. Now, were any stones left unturned while mining your darker life experiences for this book? Um, I, you know, they say write like, like everyone you know is dead. Yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> and... You can't worry about family members um, or friends or what they might think. So I tend to put it all on the page, leave it all on the page, and then uh, and then you know see what the what the editors like before I worry about whether my mom's gonna be upset about something. See if the editor even wants to keep it in. You know, the brave and bold Jacqueline <laughs> Novak is joining us today on the Book Guys. Now. Thank you. Are any stories uh, that you left on the cutting room floor uh, that you'd care to share with us to give us a taste of your acerbic wit? Oh, so like ones that are not in the book? Yes. Like, because you've already read the book, I'm I've guessing. already read the book. <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil it for those that exactly. haven't. Um, you know, what did I leave out? There was a good story about a healing I, I accepted in a Target parking lot once, like a, he a spiritual healing. That was left out of the book. I thought it was one of the better stories, but it's just, maybe it was too weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I, I find it crass to, to sort of just produce wit on the spot, you know what I mean? Um, I think it's important as an author to hold back and just say, no wit, here, you know, read the book. That's where the wit is. Read the book, that's where the, <laughs> yeah, that's so, where the knowledge is. You know, yeah, but but maybe a story like that didn't have enough wit, and that's why it didn't it didn't get in there. Um, but I did accept a healing in a Target parking lot once when I was very depressed. Here it counts. Oh, <laughs> the wit. You're waiting for the wit. Yeah. In general, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of wit, <laughs> you have a stand-up uh, comedy album out right now called Quality Notions. Is that correct? Yes. Um, now, what are the five major differences between writing for the stage as opposed to putting pen to paper? Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, the five top differences between writing for the stage and writing for the page. I would say... <laughs> <laughs> I would say that when you're writing for the stage, oh, that's okay, I, I didn't mind. Uh, writing for the stage, you know, you have to think about um, speed and how quickly someone can take something in. Um, while writing for the page, the reader might be able to, oh, hey. Yeah, hey. <laughs> He's doing it too, that's pretty cool. I'm coming on you. Yeah, yeah. So during, um, uh, so something on stage, um, it comes at you once and that's it. While someone reading something, you can take a minute with it. They can sit with a sentence for a while and let it, let it, let it work its way through, through them, you know. 
uh, slowly, <laughs> like a... Number four. Yeah. <laughs> four. four. Um, you know, um, how things sound coming from one's own voice. Are we putting you on the, the spot with this? <laughs> Five well, was a bit much. We were talking. <laughs> I, I almost wanted to disagree with Greg, but then we yeah. agreed on five. We agreed yeah. on five. I, 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 um, I could probably come up with something. I know I'm moving a little bit slow on the five. Yeah, maybe the hand was kind of stressing me out, worrying about the weight of your own hand weighing down your own arm. Um, what a fascinating insight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Jacqueline, I, I want to thank you for joining us, but I don't want you to go anywhere because we're going to have some other authors on here, and I think uh, your experiences just might add a little bit of spice to the proceedings. I'd be honored to stay, thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome our musical guest. Here is Hellbirds. Exciting really uh, musical journey. Really Last out. summer, they released a medley mashup of Pet Sounds and Sgt. Peppers, where they rearranged the two albums and re-recorded everything as one work called Pet Peppers. That the album just released, uh, reached uh, 160,000 uh, plays on YouTube. <laughs> 
They're recording their debut Great album mind. next month, and you can see them play in Seattle and Portland in mid-April. I wonder, of course, uh, what you might be doing after the show. If there's, uh, <laughs> I know a uh, little restaurant near here where they serve mm -hmm. uh, Greek salad. Mm -hmm. That's something you'd be interested in, in doing. Or? Hey, what's up? Hello. Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm extremely well now. Yeah. <laughs> a little well, change of scenery. Uh, seems to have perked me right up. It looks like you're a little tired. It looks like you got some bags under your eyes, huh? <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure what you mean. I mean, it uh, looks like you're a little tired. It looks like you could uh, maybe possibly take a break. Go on, take a nap? Uh, yes, well, I'm taking one now. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about, like, a, yeah, a nap. Sleep. Well, you might be right. Uh, we could retire somewhere that we could both uh, <laughs> lie down, listen to records, something like that. If you're interested, hey. uh, you know, uh, perhaps if. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, but uh, oh, hello. You know, I actually uh, keep a very powerful motor car here well. in the city. Uh, Brinkley, uh, yes? uh, would you fetch me Jacqueline's book? I just wanted to give it one more hard sell. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, yeah. It's, it's um, uh, right over here. Okay. Greg would know my back is a little bit sore from uh, <laughs> last night. Of we were putting together a bookshelf. Uh, this is Jacqueline's book. Uh, it's on sale in bookstores now. I really uh, recommend that everyone gets it. Acerbic wit. Yes. Uh, well, I'm. Absolutely. Well, you know, on the page and and, and when I, I'm in the mood, I guess. <laughs> is everything I, okay back there? I well, I'm just going to resume tending to my love of my life. I think you were a little having more fun over there. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's nap time for you. I got this. All fans of your show seem to communicate in one language. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, one language, too many. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Walk on by. Okay, Mr. Manton. I'm here for you. <laughs> He's an absentee human being. His a eyes front woman that shouts with the, the ecstatic conviction of someone who would rather die than apologize in the midst of a swirling, swirling maelstrom of hardcore punk. Her songwriting defies the expectations that often precede her, her presence growing to fill it like a person whose voice has been stifled and is now overjoyed by the chance to be heard. Those honest lyrics led her to the page, or more often these days, the screen, with articles appearing in the likes of Rookie, Pitchfork, The Guardian, ID, and The Hairpin. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome <laughs> Meredith Graves. Yeah. Hello. 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 Lovely to meet you. Hello. Hello. Meredith, it's an honor to have you on the show. Greg, Greg. Big Meredith. fans of you and your, all you do. Thank yes. you. Uh, welcome. While we're not a, a hardcore punk listeners, we no. did uh, pop in the CD of Perfect Pussy. And uh, <laughs> it, it was a, a, a change from a, our typical, uh, uh, yes, but uh, I, but I- it was thrilling. It, it was, was truly thrilling. thrilling, yes. Bless uh, your heart, thank you so much. A far cry from uh, our, our typical Joni Mitchell uh, uh, Tuesday mornings. <laughs> <laughs> or our Lin's, Linda Ronstadt Wednesday mornings. <laughs> it was Linda today. It was. <laughs> Where does oh. the time go? <laughs> Define what being a m woman in music is like. <laughs> it feels as if I've been waiting my whole life for a man to ask me that question. Happy to ask them. And now, now that it's here, now that I'm here in this moment with you, mm -hmm. I, I have terrible cramps right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Ear splitting like like an elephant is beating a cymbal with a cinder block deep in the recesses of my uterus. Ooh. And I feel the unceasing pain experienced generations and generations back, all of womanhood beating pots and pans against their faces through history and time. To be a woman in music is to join that daisy chain of all the proud mothers and sisters who came before me and also felt the screaming wolves of uterine fear. <laughs> I've got a similar feeling in my back. <laughs> I get cramps in my legs and my doctor says I should just eat more bananas. <laughs> 
<laughs> Greg. Meredith, how has your experience as a woman influenced your music? <laughs> For the grandmothers and the foremothers <laughs> to speak with the wisdom of the ages, to know what it is truly like to be a woman, to feel like you were there when we won the right to vote. <laughs> you were there standing in the t-shirt line at Lilith Fair. <laughs> <laughs> and you were free, as a woman in music, to feel cramps <laughs> like a woman in music feels. That's how it feels. Beautiful imagery. I'm a writer. <laughs> <laughs> how has your experience as a writer influenced your being a woman? <laughs> To be a woman, <laughs> to be a woman writer is to write with the knowledge of the history of all women, to write the history of the tribe of the women that came before you. It's to be part of a lineage of women, a sisterhood of, of womanness. When, when the, the, the blood, the, the blood flows from the pen of your uterus, and you write the history of what it is to be a woman. That's what it is to be, to be both a writer and, and a woman. In the pages of Rookie Magazine, you wrote about pro wrestling rivalries. I should ask, it's a guilty pleasure for me. Do you have a pick in the big upcoming match between the Spitfire Bobby Blaze and the unstoppable Harley Tucker? <laughs> As a woman, <laughs> and a wrestling fan, I have to tell you, I, I have been so tender <laughs> since the passing of the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> that I, I can't watch it without weeping. So, as a woman, no. <laughs> that sounds like a vote for Harley Tucker to me. <laughs> Your new record label, Honor Press, is uh, quite literally honoring the press as it's not just a record label, but it's also a book publishing company now. Uh, do you see the dwindling world of print and the world of indie music to be one and the same? Yes. <laughs> Riveting. Now, uh, you're not just a, a, a musician. You've also, like I said, put pen to paper. Uh, you've been a writer in the pages of Rookie and uh, ID and The Guardian. Uh, what are the main differences between uh, mining your personal experiences for uh, a mosh pit compared to uh, for the latte sipping blog crowd? It's all pain. It's all about the hurt that you can enjoy causing other people. I enjoy hurting people. <laughs> it's the same thing a lot of the time to reveal yourself in either of those mediums. It's meaningful. I want my literary readership to smell me on the screen as I want my listening audience to read my words in the air, emblazoned in a hail of sputum. Um, uh, 
you certainly reveal yourself in uh, uh, both your deeply personal songs as well as uh, blogs about uh, flowers and uh, social issues. Uh, Jacqueline, your whole book is about revealing yourself. Uh, uh, what do you think it's like to put yourself uh, out there on a pedestal? I mean, when we write, all we're doing is writing about our favorite books and films. It's a question for both of you. Hello again. <laughs> Hello. Um, definitely don't feel like I'm on a pedestal. Just feel like I'm, you know, on a slab, right? Putting oneself out on a pedestal kind of suggests. Did I say pedestal? I think so. Stop. You stop. Oh. You stop it. Get your grasping hands off of this poor woman. You know, a young girl walked down the dirt path, wiping the gravel from her forearms and the leaves from her skirt. The sun warm on her back, deciding to leave all her sorrows behind. <laughs> and uh, get you out of now. <laughs> You've made your choices. I choose to remain by the side of uh, this marvel, this oracle of Rhode Island, who you has produced. <laughs> you have nasty in your eyes. Our next guest. Uh, you may have seen him on Last Comic Standing on NBC. He's also a member of the Weezer cover band uh, titled The Undone Sweaters. <laughs> he came up in the Cleveland independent comedy scene, which uh, you could see in his feature-length documentary, Make Fun, uh, and recently has found success with a blog titled Felines of New York, a send-up of web sensation Humans of New York, instead focusing on the mus musings of our four-legged companions. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Jim Twos. Hello. Hello. Hey. Your book is about cats. Yes. <laughs> How do you find the cats? Uh, uh, they're uh, friends of mine's cats mostly, and then uh, you know, uh, friends of their friends, and then some were just random solicitations via the website. And you take pictures of the cats. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then you write fun things on the bottom. Well, yeah, I, uh, I mean, I interview the cats. Mm -hmm. But cats don't talk, so. So you're, are the, the owners write the book? No, I, I, I pretend to speak as the cat. Do you understand? Uh, because cats don't talk, uh, I, and I am a writer, so I, t I talk for them. I pretend to know what they're thinking, and then I write that down. And that goes along with the picture, and that's what the book is comprised of. We understand. Okay. <laughs> well, my next question is, how do you come up with those captions? <laughs> uh, it, 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 there's a variety of ways, but I guess it's uh, you know it's not much of a magic trick. I just try not to think five? too. How about you name five? Five. Five ways that I come up with the. Yes. Uh, uh, so, sometimes in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, uh, so, uh, sometimes I drink coffee and then uh, I'll have an idea. Uh, sometimes I just stare at my own cat for a while. <laughs> uh, so, uh, sometimes I, I will uh, smoke marijuana. Whoa. Wait, what, is that, is that a? It's catnip for humans. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a performance enhancing drug. If you're gonna talk for cats, you gotta. <laughs> got to be on their wavelength. <laughs> Earlier I spoke about these uh, uh, two authors. Uh, 
mining their personal experiences and uh, even bringing up things that uh, might be dark uh, as a form of catharsis. Do you do that when you write captions for pictures of cats? <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm, yeah, sort of. You know, some, there's a little bit of me How? in everyone. I don't know. <laughs> I, it, you know, I, I didn't write them all in one day, so some days if I'm feeling bad, you know, that might reflect in what the cat has to say. That's how I get it out. I don't, what does the cat say? Uh, meow, mostly. In general. Does it just say meow in there? No, I mean. I have to admit, I uh, did not read this book. But <laughs> it's kind of long, so. Have you ever thought of making a calendar? Uh, I have, okay. uh, but the, you know. Jack Jacqueline's book was very dense. <laughs> uh, uh, Meredith has articles. This is very thin. All across yeah, the web. Uh, it's more of a bathroom reader than anything. Do you take the pictures? I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank you. That's awesome. Thanks. Uh, what was it about the uh, humans of New York that you found uh, as something that you could mine? I felt like it was too serious, uh, and I wanted to make fun of it. There were and people, strangers, not writers, but just people on the street, and uh, with this, you're mocking them. Yeah. yeah. How does that make you feel? Good. Uh, I, I'm not mocking those strangers. I'm mocking the, the uh, button pushing of humans of New York. The owners of the, are you mocking the owners of the cats? No, not at all. You're mocking the cats. I'm mocking cats in general. What a lot you, of times. Why would you do silly. that? Why would you do that? Cats are beautiful, innocent, and small and soft. That's why I took beautiful pictures of them but they have dumb thoughts. Are those, <laughs> are those photos photoshopped? I mean, they're touched up, you know, Aww. brightened, enhanced. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, and it, one and it, final question. What day is it? Wednesday? Tuesday. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You can use that in the, oh, in the next Oh, because that's, that's my last name. Okay, I get, no, I'm on board. I'm back. Do you like music, Jim? I love music. Uh, well, we have another song from Hellbirds. Yeah! <laughs>
Halberds from Brooklyn, New York. You absolute monster. No, you're the monster. You, you thieving, gold-grubbing ape. No, you're the ape. You go, ha, 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 for bananas. <laughs> you're all bananas over the girls over here. I want her. She's my little princess. Yes, you're trying to peel her away from me. I'm not trying to peel her away. I'm trying to eat her like an apple. I love her. I love her. No, you don't. You're a demon. I can see it in your eyes. You make me want to cry. <laughs> Why don't we let her choose who she loves more? Yes. Mm -hmm. I love you so much. <laughs> like, me too. bigger than the moon, bigger than the universe. Caleb. No, it's, My boy. It's Roy. I'm Roy. Roy. I choose Roy. <laughs> See that, you demon? She chose me! Because I love her sweetly. Well, Boom. yes, you're Boom. the victor. Yeah. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, and, and I wish you many happy kisses upon her withered face as hey. you count the gold in your hey. counting house. It's not about the gold! <laughs> It's about the love and the words. Is it all about penny backs for you, huh? It's not about the money for you? It's absolutely not about the well, money. Well, you don't care if the contract is altered so that I uh, keep the money from the newly published novel? Take it and live a, a uneventful, meaningless life with money. I'll have love. This is wonderful news. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is truly, truly incredible. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> no. Oh. Is she having an allergic reaction to her medicine? I think so. <laughs> no, no, no. No. Ben? Ben. Ben, help. Ben. 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 No. no. What did you do? Well, this way, everyone really got what they wanted. Uh, you know, in Laundry on the Line, she has that incredible sentence Numinous, about love Numinous. living on, long Numinous. after the earthly body has split like a ripe nectarine. You don't have to remind me of the words. They live in me. Oh, <laughs> indeed, the most important part. And I uh, get the contract and the publishing rights, etc., etc. <laughs> Who possessed beauty without vanity, strength without insolence, courage without ferocity, and all the virtues of man without his vices. Not you. Oh, no. That's Lord Byron's epitaph for a dog, fitting in this case uh, as her earthly spirit. You're a monster. If you believe that. Good show. Fun show. <laughs> Fun, cool guests. Fun to be here. We still have our, our, our rating segment. But don't, don't let me stand in the way. Very well. Um, <laughs> Greg, how would you rate How to Weep in Public? Well, it's hilarious. You laugh a lot. You cry a lot. It's moving, original, beautiful. I'm going to give it a read it. And Ooh. Felines of New York, available now. <laughs> And I, uh, whatever uh, happens to come out of Honor Press, uh, uh, I, I will certainly uh, give that a uh, uh, buy it, uh, read it, uh, cherish it rating. Love it, hold it, mm -hmm. need it, want it. One have more it. question for you, as a woman. <laughs> uh, uh, how do you think tonight's show went? Beautiful. Next week on The Book Guys with Greg and Greg, uh, we review The Great American Short, Short Story. Story. Please tune in next week. We are Greg and Greg, The Book, book Guys. guys. Yeah.
Thank you, Greg. Yeah.